Kicking off the list at number 10, Titan's Ocean. Yeah, we'll start this list with an ocean signal out of this world. I mean that in a literal sense. This first one comes from Thanos' home planet, Titan. Yeah, it's one of Saturn's many moons. Saturn has 82 moons in total, so if you were a werewolf and you lived on Saturn, odds are you'd be pretty exhausted. Around 10 years ago, NASA's Cassini spacecraft detected water inside the shell of ice that is that moon. That's pretty exciting. Also, water in space anywhere is exciting, but also I'm like, mm, aliens, they're coming. To quote a Cassini team member, the search for water is an important goal in solar system exploration, and now we've spotted another place where it's abundant. Abundant, did you hear that? It's abundant, nice. We love abundant sea creatures resting on the moon Titan. NASA has detected low frequency radio waves on Saturn's icy moon, and it sounds pretty eerie. To know this is off planet entirely, if there's water involved, I don't wanna hear any space whales. I'm all set. Number nine, submarine propeller. When it comes to creepy sounds or signals heard from the ocean, here or out there, it really depends on who you ask if it's creepy or not. A submarine propeller firing up underwater to many is nothing. Just another day working on the Navy, if anything. But this guy, with submechanophobia, the fear of big things underwater, the sound of a submarine propeller firing up is absolutely haunting. My palms are literally sweating just reading this. The noise of the propeller is traceable, but the sonar, that can mess up some whales. Sonar underwater is so loud you can feel it through your entire body. It's definitely not something you want to witness up close. It's like standing near the speaker at a club. Your bones just feel it. Take a listen. Take a listen. Also, a little headphone warning. It's kind of, it's exactly what you expect. Number eight, slow down. Not to be confused with Slow Ride, that's an absolute banger from the 70s. Slow Down was recorded on May 19th, 1997, so a little bit later. It was picked up in the equatorial Pacific Ocean, just in the middle of literally nowhere. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration picked it up not once, but several times every year. Our best guess as to what this sound is, perhaps it's moving ice in Antarctica. But the fascinating part here is that this sound decreases in frequency over time. It takes about seven minutes in total, so we can't include the entire clip or else you'd be pretty bored. But here's the clip 16 times as fast. Scientists believe the sound is a massive iceberg scratching against the ocean floor over of course seven minutes And then after seven minutes it came to a, a halt But the fact that we hear this sound every year that's the concerning part We're like why is it is it coming out and then halting again? Cthulhu, is that you, or is it a lot of ice melting? Most likely the latter, but who knows? Number seven, whistle. If you can whistle, honestly, hats off to you. I've been trying for years. My lips are too dry and too weak. I have weak lips, apparently. The whistle recorded in July 1997 is not weak, and as this list hint towards, it's certainly not dry. The thing with this mysterious sound is that it was only picked up by one hydrophone, meaning scientists can't pinpoint its location, making this an unexplained sound. It came from somewhere in the Pacific Ocean, so sleep with that in your head. Somewhere, how calming is that? Here's the unidentified sound. What do you think this is? The National Oceanic and the, sorry, the NOAA rather, has compared the sound to some volcanic activity heard in the Mariana Volcanic Arc. But again, we can't pinpoint it at all, so we have no idea. We need three hydrophones to do so. This one was only heard in one. Number six, upsweep. Unidentified yet again. Love to hear it, literally. Sound travels much faster underwater than it does in air, more than four times as fast. So when we hear these noises, one, they're incredibly loud, which is the most impressive part in my opinion, but because sound travels so quickly, it's hard to find out where these calls are coming from. Upsweep is an unidentified sound that was heard throughout the entire Pacific Ocean. When the Pacific Marine Environmental Laboratory fired up its sound surveillance system back in August 1991, these sounds were heard. See, unlike the sounds we've covered so far, this one happens in real time. It's not sped up because it's 17 minutes long, it's just, that's it, that's what it sounded like. These upsweeping sounds lasting a few seconds each ping is definitely concerning. The source was roughly located around New Zealand and South America, somewhere around those places, and it peaks around autumn and spring. So maybe it's just a monster tucking itself in for the winter, and then maybe it's waking back up in spring. 
Who knows? Scientists at the NOAA have a better idea so far. A little boring, but they believe it's underwater volcanic activity. I say boring, it's not really boring, it's just predictable, I guess. This sound has been getting lower pitched every year, so who knows? Maybe that's a bad thing, maybe it's a good thing. Maybe this thing's gonna go off. Maybe it's gonna go off tomorrow. That was 30 years ago, so any day. Number five, Julia. Who is she? Who is this Julia chick we've been talking about? Julia sounds like a rather friendly addition to this list, but don't let her name fool you. Julia is terrifying, definitely, yeah. Back in March 1999, this noise here was recorded again by the NOAA, and this time the noise was heard across the entire Pacific Ocean hydrophone array. So across all that distance, we heard Julia. So whatever made this noise, be it an iceberg, volcanic activity, giant fish from Legend of Zelda, it's got power behind those vocals, you know? She's loud. The point of its origin is determined to be somewhere around Bransfield Straits and Cape Adair. This Cape Adair gets a lot of action in the world, sound-wise and bloop-wise, and we think it's because of icebergs, but maybe the Kraken's name is just Julia. Maybe this is her just slowly introducing herself to the world. Again, it's a long clip in real time, but sped up, sounds like somebody's humming underwater. It's terrifying. Take a listen. This one creeps me out a lot, a lot. I think I've heard the hum before. I don't know, maybe it was Kid Cudi in the distance, maybe it was this hum. Either way, I'm on board. The hum has been heard for decades now. We have no idea where the hum is coming from. Our best guess is that it has something to do with, of course, as the title hints, the ocean. A resident from Woodland, England spoke out on their experience saying, it vibrates through the house. We've turned all the electricity off in the house and we can still hear it, so it's not that. It's not tinnitus, that's a high pitched sound and this is very low. If I put my fingers in my ears, it stops, so I know it's not in my head. It's heard commonly in Hawaii, Britain, North America, so it's, hey, everywhere. It's been heard everywhere, I guess. Some have called it the Windsor hum, which is insanely close to us, hence why I think I've heard it in real life. I put the microphone to you now, people, the fine people of YouTube. Have you heard the hum? If so, where were you? Comment down below. Number three, 2021 boom. A little bit more recent for this one. Back in early 2021, San Diego residents reacted to what sounded like a sonic boom. Well, it's been heard three times since the initial report. And many still have questions. I have questions. Now you have questions. Windows were shaking, doors were rattling, all of San Diego heard and felt this thing. But what was it? An earthquake? Being in San Diego and all residents are used to earthquakes, but this was entirely different. Everyone felt something new here. Also, it helps to know that no earthquakes were reported at this time, so that theory is just out of the way. And the Marines didn't take responsibility for it as well. And if it was a sonic boom from a plane, well, that would be pretty obvious. We'd kind of have an idea. We'd have a few ideas if it was a plane ripping overhead. Plus, they're not allowed to do that kind of stuff that close to the coast. December 28th, 2021, residents were posting their thoughts on Twitter. One user tweeted, San Diego Diego is cool because I'm like, oh wow, just felt an earthquake, but not actually, it was a sonic boom. Well, keep an ear out for any more mysterious sonic booms coming from the ocean in 2022. The last one wasn't long ago at all. If you live in San Diego, drop us a comment, help us understand what's going on. Number two, the train. This sound was given its name because, well, it sounds like a passing train in the distance. Simple as that, sometimes it's not, you know, scientific. It was first recorded on March 5th, 1997, and it sounds, honestly, it sounds like my PS4. It sounds really loud, it sounds like a really loud, really hot fan that's gonna just, just lift up and take off in the middle of playing Warzone. I'm like, hi, no, come back. Here's the clip. The leading theory as to what's making the sound is not a surprising one large icebergs grounding near Ross Sea and Cape Adair. Again, that's probably the most plausible explanation here. Friendly reminder that more than 80% of the ocean is undiscovered, so my only question is, what if it's not? Number one, 52 hertz whale. I love whales because they're the closest thing to a dinosaur, in my opinion. They're massive, we have no idea how they mate, that's still a mystery, we mentioned that in another list. They're beautiful, complex creatures that we should just leave alone. Probably, definitely. Especially the 52 Hertz whale. Well, maybe not too alone, because there's a documentary about this sound. Joshua Zeman made a documentary about the loneliest whale on the planet. Sounds pretty depressing, but it's equally as interesting. For decades now, we've heard this sound. Back in 1989, the US Navy first detected this sound that measured in at more than twice the frequency of a normal, healthy whale call. 
so this thing's loud. Originally what got them intrigued was the fact that this could have been a military mechanical sound, of course, but then they thought, well maybe it's an animal, perhaps this is like a new Cthulhu hybrid dinosaur thing that someone's working on. This is a lonely whale, but why is its frequency scaring away possible friends and mates? Kicking off the list at number 10, the Bell Island Boom. Back in 1978, Bell Island, located just northwest of Newfoundland, a loud boom was heard. It was powerful enough to shake houses. This thing caused property damage, right? It's pretty intense. There's a pretty large group of individuals that believe this was some sort of supernatural phenomena of some sorts, of course. On a Sunday night, right in the middle of Jig's dinner, this flash of lightning just shook the land. Darren Bickford, who was just 12 years old at the time, was riding his bike back home to catch his favorite TV show. Pre-Netflix problems, we love those. As I approached the end of our driveway, all the birds stopped chirping, all the dogs stopped barking, it just went so still. And then it was both. It was like a shotgun blast followed by a ball of light, and then followed immediately after the second ball. The ground shook underneath me, it was the biggest noise I've ever heard in my entire your life, end quote. So what were these floating balls of lightning? Where did they come from? What well, many believe it was a super weapon test conducted by either the United States or the Soviet Union. Either way, if you visit Newfoundland, keep your head up. Getting screeched in should probably help either way. Number nine, sounds of Mariana's Trench. Hold your breath for this next one, folks. Here we go. The Challenger Deep is the deepest known point on Earth's seabed. My ears were popping just looking at this. The Challenger Deep is, of course, located on the south side of the Marianas Trench in the Pacific Ocean. You may not witness this depression up close at any point in your life, but thanks to the internet, you can hear it. Yeah, there we go. Scientists recorded around 23 days of material on the ocean floor, and it's not just bubbles and or trouble. Only four manned missions have gone this deep. The last one was in 2012, so it's pretty rare to have any information down there at all. The results were pretty surprising, being as deep as they were. The sounds were haunting, to say the least. Oceanographer Robert Ziak was leading this project, and many of these sounds recorded were those from the surface sound travels quite a ways. To quote Ziak, the ambient sound field is dominated by the sound of earthquakes, both near and far, as well as distinct moans of baleen whales and the clamor of a category four typhoon that just happened to pass overhead. Yeah, all of that hitting you at the same time. You're like, next. Number seven, Mist Poofers. There's a fun name, Mist Poofers. Sounds like a royal way of farting. Excuse me while I Mist Poofer. Mm -mm. It's not a royal toot, sadly, it's actually much worse. Mist Poofers are a series of loud booms heard near the waters all over the Netherlands. It's been reported as this loud crack, like thunder or a large canyon splitting in half. The might of Thor just being unleashed in the Netherlands, perhaps? Is Odin back? It sounds like he's back. I don't know, should we go check it out? It's often heard in the Bay of Fundy up here in Canada, but reports have come in as far as Japan, Ireland, really all around the world. Have you ever heard of Mist Poofer? Are the oceans cracking open? Or has Voldemort returned and now he sent his army of Mist Poofers? Are we doomed? We're doomed. Number six, Quacker. When I first read about this, I thought it said Quaker, like the ground was perhaps splitting open like an earthquake. That would fit in with this list so far, right? Mother Nature sending loud signals that she's about to break open and blow to smithereens. Sounds okay, makes sense. The Quacker, not Quaker, the Quacker was heard during the Cold War. While Soviet Navy ballistic missile submarines were heading through North Atlantic and Arctic waters, they heard quacking, almost like a rivet. Whenever a submarine passed a certain area, this loud quack would come from deep below. It came from an object that was moving around. So, that's scary. The Soviets thought that they overheard secret US tech down below. Uh, yes, the deep sea duck. I've heard rumors, let's go check it out. Scientists currently believe it came from a giant squid. That's somehow more alarming than the ocean floor cracking open to me. I don't know why. Is that alarming? That feels alarming. Kraken, is that you? Number five, hidden ocean heat. If you put your ear up to a seashell, if you listen closely, apparently you can hear global warming. Yeah. I'm not kidding, how depressing is this one? Back in 1991, scientists lowered these massive speakers, like these nightclub subwoofers, into the waters at Heard Island. Really? Okay, I see what you guys did there. These speakers emitted low frequency sounds all across our oceans. These signals were later picked up by receivers near California and Bermuda. And these signals contain information on the temperatures of our oceans. Our oceans absorb more than 90% of energy left over from global warming. There were a few scientists who at the time were also concerned about how these low frequency sounds may be affecting ocean life. Yeah, what does that sound like to a beluga whale? Mm, not great, I assume. Number four, snapping shrimp. If you hear this in the ocean, you're not gonna have a great time, my friend. I have to include the sounds from a snapping shrimp because for its size, it creates a sonic boom. It's extremely impressive. Oh. Oh. 
that really hurt. They're often found in coral reefs, oyster reefs, and these little guys, these pistol shrimp, they hit their prey at 100 kilometers an hour. In doing so, a large air bubble is created, and because this Mike Tyson shrimp is so quick with the jabs, the following pop is around 200 decibels. The sound alone stuns their prey, or if they're lucky, for both parties, it sometimes can kill them. The sound resembles dry burning twigs, almost like it's crackling. Like, almost like you're cracking your knuckles underwater. So you'd be sitting there enjoying a drink in the sand, and all of a sudden, those are five shrimp hitting you at the same time. Number three, clownfish. This is the last fish entry on our list, I swear. Then we'll get back to some more creepy bleeps and or bloops. Honestly, this is so interesting, I could not include it. If the movie Finding Nemo was scientifically accurate, Nemo and his father would sound a lot different. It would be a horror film, realistically. Clownfish sounds are all but a joke. In order to obtain dominance, these fish make aggressive popping noises at one another, <laughs> which is so funny because they're so cute. Their jaws open and close at high speeds. They basically beatbox if there's an intruder or if there's a possible mate. Don't get clowned by a clownfish, keep your ears open. And finally, number one, the buzzer. No, I'm not talking about Kawhi Leonard when he, you know, we're still thinking about it, that's, that's a good one. This one legit gives me goosebumps, that's why I'm gonna end the video off. We're jumping out of the sea for this one, so lose those goggles. In the 1980s, when a radio tower just north of Moscow began transmitting these random and creepy sounding beeps and bloops, come 1992, these sounds began to change. That year, it suddenly switched to a buzzing sound, short and sweet, around 25 times a minute. These strange routines would be interrupted once every few weeks by a male voice, which would then be reciting a string of numbers and words, like he was trying to reset the winter soldier or something like that. And to make things more creepy here, in June of 2010, and also in August of the same year, the station briefly stopped sending out signals altogether. Maybe they ran out of battery, I don't know, maybe they needed a lozenge break, some lemon tea, all that talking that entire time, that's gotta damage the vocals. At the end of August in 2010, the station again changed and there began to be different shuffling sounds and thuds that can now be heard in the background. And often these little snippets of the dance of little swans from Swan Lake would also be interrupted into the broadcast. Yeah, if any secret agents are listening to this, I want in. Whatever operation this is going on in the ocean in a submarine, Send me Swan Lake Mission Impossible briefings. Knock twice, I'll do a pirouette. Let's do it. A pirouette kicks a bad guy's head off. Easy. Number 10, Waterworld. Now, if you've seen Avatar 2, this first one on today's list will get you pretty pumped. Could this be Jake Sully himself? Can we help him? What do we do? Can I be a big blue guy? Be a dream come true. Scientists have recently discovered a planet completely covered by ocean water. It's just one big blue ball floating in the sky. Now, it sounds exciting and haunting all at the same time. I'm not a big fan of oceans. So this is just bad. Or space, I don't like either. This is a mix of both. It was first spotted by NASA's space telescope, TESS, which is the Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, TESS, which as its name hint towards, surveys the entire sky to find, hopefully, exoplanets around nearby bright stars. Some interstellar stuff going on there. Why do we need to know, right? Are we moving? Lo and behold, orbiting a star 100 light years from Earth lies a water planet in a habitable zone of space, where its temperature would be just right for liquid water to exist on the surface and apparently might be a tropical paradise. I don't know, looks kind of fun. Astronomers have called TOI 1452b, that's the name of the planet, the best ocean planet candidate discovered so far. I don't know, should we move? I'm not a big fan of water. I don't, this sounds like the worst place for me. TESS observes a slight decrease in brightness of a star in a binary star system every 11 days, and then after more than 50 hours of observation, they estimated the planet's mass at nearly five times that of Earth. So yeah, it's massive. There's plenty of room for all of us to drown. Number eight, sirens. AKA mermaids. Can they sing? Can they call out to sailors and make them do crazy stuff? Who knows? The mythology surrounding sirens, it's interesting, but I really don't think we have any Atlanteans flirting with sailors. You know what I mean? No one's getting catcalled by a mermaid. You know what I mean? It's not happening. On his first trip overseas back in 1493, Christopher Columbus claims to have seen not one, not two, but three sirens. He even wrote about it. He journaled. He said they rose well out of the sea, but they are not so beautiful as they are said to be. And he signed off. A little rhyme? What is that, Dr. Seuss? How disappointing. They're not that beautiful after all. Damn. I mean, when it comes to correctly identifying places and or people, obviously Christopher Columbus can get a little confused. We know this in history now. So historians believe that Christopher Columbus may have seen a manatee. Yeah, this guy's journaling about falling in love with not one, not two, but three manatees. He's like, ugh. I wish. If only they if only they loved me back. What an idiot. Yeah, Chris, those were manatees. Their skin is pink and fleshy, so I guess it's a fair mix-up. But you know. Historically, sirens have been known to call out sailors, but I mean I don't think 
this wasn't that case. And finally, number one, crop circles. We'll finish off with a cute one, I guess. Why not, right? Although I'm arguing that this one is still pretty terrifying. Crop circles on the ocean floor. Aliens confirmed, my friends. They were first spotted back in 1995, right off the southern coast of Japan, and for 16 years, these things were blowing the minds of divers. And I absolutely can see this. Like, nobody knew where these signals were coming from. There would be one a week, just these weird symbols, these alien symbols, hieroglyphics underwater, and then the next week, they would be gone. Tiny aliens or cute tiny puffer fish. That's right, the latter. In 2011, one of these dudes got caught in 4K, and it's one of the weirdest things I've ever seen. These male puffer for fish, they try and lure in all these ladies by making art on the ocean floor. You know, some birds dance like crazy while some fish make art. Yeah, those are animals that we live with. Deal with it, I guess. The thing that baffles me here, concerns me really, if anything, is that the puffer fish uses a shell. Like he uses a tool to carve away his emotions. That's crazy. I don't know if fish could do this. I'm really blown away here. I'm not sure what this symbol means here, but it's signaling something. It's signaling maybe love. I don't know. We could all use some of that, no? Starting off this countdown, we have the sea monster. What you just heard is a noise no one knows much about. Seriously, researchers don't know what it's from. I don't know about you, but it sounded like a deep growl. For sure, that is the sound from some massive sea monster. It literally sounds like some evil creature cackling away or something like that. All I know is that I don't like the sound of that and I never want to encounter this creature. Now, because of the power and loudness of the sound, it can be assumed that whatever is making that sound is quite massive. have the Challenger Deep Moans. And if you guys are liking this video so far, then make sure you smash that like button because it really helps us out. So at the very bottom of Mariana's Trench, there is a point called the Challenger Deep, which is the deepest point known on Earth. Since it is so deep, it's been pretty hard to explore, so we really don't know what's down there. But in March of 2016, a recording picked up some very creepy low moans coming from down there. Basically to even get this recording was a struggle. The microphone was encased in titanium and was slowly lowered down so it wouldn't be crushed by the pressure. It took them 23 days to get the microphone to the deepest point down there. Then that's finally when they picked up this. Again, the sound of a massive sea creature that we haven't discovered yet, or at least that's what it sounds like, honestly. In our sixth spot today, we have the aquatic choirs. This is unfortunately the only sound that I couldn't find an actual recording of, but scientists in Australia have discovered that many different fish sing together at dawn and dusk, much like how birds do, and then they wake you up in the morning and you're really cranky. Anyways, researchers from Curtin University in Perth started recording the sound that a number of fish make. Most of the sounds were from a single fish repeating the same call over and over again. But when two or more fish of the same kind joined in, the sounds would overlap and basically would sound like someone was humming or singing underwater. In fact, they discovered that the black jewelfish made a ba 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 sound. I think it's more like a there you go, that's, that's my impression of the black jewelfish. Either way, hearing that underwater would trip anyone out. Like imagine you're swimming off and you hear that, you're like, yo, who's there? It's just a fish playing games, but still. Moving on to number three, we have the Devil's Cauldron. The Devil's Cauldron is a geothermal location in Nevada. There's a lot of legends in the area saying that this place is extremely haunted and cursed. Well, one man decided to see what the heck was up with the Devil's Cauldron and to do some investigating of his own. So he placed an iPhone 11 in the cauldron and recorded to see what it would pick up. He managed to record what sounds like screams coming from within. He was not expecting to capture that. What makes this even scarier is how berserk the phone went after capturing these screams. 
As a result, some people think that this spot is the portal to the underworld or something crazy like that. Number five, the Kraken. Jack Sparrow's worst nightmare. Is it real? Is the Kraken actually a real thing? Where does this come from? Well, maybe. The giant squid is not that far-fetched. Some creatures in the ocean are massive as is, like for example, this manta ray off the coast of Trinidad. If the internet didn't exist and I saw this in real life, I wouldn't be able to sleep at night. So of course, many sailors reported seeing the Kraken at one point or another. The ocean's terrifying. For ages now, sailors specifically specifically from Norway and Greenland have all continued to share eyewitness reports of a giant sea monster, the Kraken. Apparently it had tentacles big enough to pull you and your mateys right off of the ship. In 1857, Danish naturalist Jepeta Steenstrup found a large squid beak and then soon after he was sent parts of another specimen from the Bahamas. So people were trying to help him out. So he concluded with all these gross puzzle pieces that the Kraken is real and it's part of a species of giant squid called Architeuthis dux, which is Latin for ruling squid. Very little is known about giant squids seeing as they're so hard to track, but we did get a photo of one back in 2005 and a video of one in 2013. Number three, the green flash. I watch way too many superhero movies, so this next one had me pacing around my living room for a hot minute. Who is this? Who is this guy? Who's this green flash man? The green flash phenomena happens in the ocean. So far, we've only observed the flash above water, but I'm sure there's some mysterious happenings going on below, you know? I'm sure there's a few confused fish over there when it happens. This happens during sunset and sunrise. Best time to see the green flash is on a clear evening over water water and the air must be clean. So if you're in a polluted city, you're like, damn it. The reason we see a green flash is because of our boy, Roy G. Biv. This is the G in Roy G. Biv. Sunlight reflects off the atmosphere like a big old prism and in turn for thousands of years, human have probably been like, what was that? I just saw a green flash. I keep seeing it every night. What is going on? They're probably so confused for thousands of years. No, it's not a Justice League villain. It's just the sunset. Number two, HMS Daedalus. This 19th century warship belonged to the Royal Navy. It was this big class beauty equipped with 19 guns and it launched at Woolock Dockyard in 1844. It was a big deal. Four years later, Captain McQA, along with his officers and crew, all set sail to St. Helena, but during their commute, they were visited. Yeah, this is why we have the guns on the side of the ship. If any trouble comes along, be it pirates, whatever the case, we're now equipped. Thing is, this visitor didn't come from the sides or the front or the back, it came from below in the form of a 60 foot long serpent. And it hung around for 20 minutes, apparently, with its head breaking the surface of the water occasionally. The captain said it was so close under the ship that if it was one of his own crew members under there, he could have easily recognized their face. That's how clear the water was. It wasn't choppy or cloudy, it was a normal day otherwise. So do we think 60 foot long sea snakes exist? Who's to say? I mean, considering this list, I'd say yeah. We barely explored our own ocean. And finally, number one, the Milky Sea Phenomenon. This one you can see from space, so we're leaving the biggest and brightest for last, folks. The Milky Sea Phenomenon was first observed back in 1864 by Captain Raphael Semmes. Captain Raphael Semmes journaled it aboard his CSS Alabama. He wrote about passing from the deep blue waters into a patch of water so bright that it startled him. The whole face of nature seemed to change, and with a little stretch of imagination, the Alabama might have been conceived to be a phantom ship lighted up by the sickly an unearthly glare of a phantom sea. That's not an exaggeration as well. This phenomena is something out of Avatar, really. It's so alien-like. Bioluminescence is part of the reason for this ghostly bright blue appearance, but sailors say there is something sinister about it as well. To this day, we don't fully understand how bioluminescence works, but it's continuing to blow our minds. For example, we just discovered a new shark. We just found a glowing shark. A glowing shark, what is happening here? The Milky Sea phenomenon is bigger than a glowy shark and it can span around 100,000 square miles. So you'll see it. If it's around, you'll probably see it. It lasts for a few nights too, so I don't blame these sailors for getting spooked out. In 2005, we got low orbit satellites to snap a pic of this phenomenon, but even so, we don't fully understand why it happens, but we're trying our best. <laughs>